Welcome to Oversliced. If you like the content, please consider giving the video a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel. Remember to press the bell icon so you never miss a notification about new content released on this channel. Hi, I am Kareem and you are watching Oversliced. 21st of March is celebrated as Navroz in many cultures as it marks the beginning of the spring season in the Northern Hemisphere. Today I'll show you how you can create a beautiful looking flower vase for 3D printing using a 3D software in a few simple steps. Let's draw a rough outline of how the vase will look like. We'll have So we will draw the ways using three sketches, uh, one each for the base, the midsection, and the top of the ways, and combine them using a technique called loft. So this is going to be our base. This will be the mid, and this is going to be the top. We will use three different sketches. Uh, that way we can have a, a nice looking um, end result when we uh, loft it. F let's start with the base. The, for the base, we will use a four-sided star. Uh, something like this, with, uh, which will be bounded by an inner circle of 10 mm and an outer circle of 20 mm. The midsection will use a similar technique. We will use an inner section of 15 mm and an outer section, um, outer radius of 20 mm. But we will use an eight sided star instead of um, a four sided one. So something like And for the top section, we will use uh, the same design as the midsection, but we will increase the radiuses, or radii, uh, to 25 millimeters and 35 millimeters. So this would uh, turn to 25 millimeters and this would be 35 millimeters. We will also place the midsection 20 millimeters above the base and the top section 60 millimeters above the base. For this design, we will use a 3D software called FreeCAD version 0.17. This is available for all platforms. Let's start uh, by creating a new project and switching to the part design. I've already saved this file um, as uh, with the name Waze. So let's start by creating a body and adding a sketch to it in the XY plane. We'll start with um, the base. Let's draw two concentric circles. With the origin as the center. Change them both into construction. And let's give them the radius inner circle 10 outer 20 um, create the four-sided star 
Um, since it's going to be a symmetric shape, um, let's start with um, a polygon tool. Let's start drawing lines that connect the circles, create a rough shape, and we'll constrain it later. Okay, now there's this particular vertex. Let's go ahead and constrain it to the inner circle. I mean, spec looks like everything else is connected to the inner and outer uh, triangles. Now, let's go ahead and uh, make the inner vertices symmetric and for symmetry this is the guy same thing for the bottom ones and on the left hand side symmetric to the x-axis right hand side symmetric to the Okay, so they will automatically take the correct place because of all this symmetry. Let's go ahead and con attach the, uh, fix the vertices onto the axis to complete the rest of the sketch. And here we go. Um, there's still one degree of freedom and that may be because yeah let's let's do this let's make let's make all these lines we'll just leave one of them out give them the equality constraint and that should fully constrain the sketch close this looks like a star let's rename this sketch to base let's move on to the next sketch the midsection click body add a new sketch in the XY plane go ahead and hide base sketch um, start with uh, two concentric circles for construction geometry similar to what we did earlier give them the radius 15 for the inner circle 20 for the outer circle using the polyline tool let's go ahead and create our first eight sided star now while I'm drawing this I'm noticing that there are some unexpected constraints that are being added automatically we will need to remove those the, the uh, these constraints are the vertical line constraint and the horizontal line constraint. Uh, the easiest way to remove them is to scroll down here, find them and delete them. We don't need those constraints because these lines are not going to be horizontal or vertical. It's always going to be at an angle. Okay, let's go ahead and attach these points to the Um, X and Y axes and now let's work on the remainder let's go ahead and save this while we are at it select all of these lines with the exception of one
and apply the equality constraint and look at that it's already fully constrained let's go ahead and close this rename this sketch to mid so we have the base we have the mid now we need the top sketch now instead of creating a brand new sketch since the top sketch looks very much like the mid sketch mid sketch with the exception of the radii of the bounding circles let's just copy the mid sketch and um, paste it so copy um, dependencies select no and paste it back and let's go ahead and rename this to top and let me drag this into the body so it is part of the same body now what we will do is we will edit the sketch change the outer diameter first or outer radius first to 35 sketch is still bound and then the outer to 25 and now we have our three sketches now they are still not placed um, in, in, in the z-axis they are lying in the same plane we want to move them um, so that they are where they need to be for the ways to work let's switch this to front view so all of them are lying in the same plane let's start with the mid sketch first go to the properties view under attachment position change the Z to 20 so lift it up a little bit and then same thing for top change this to 60 let me do view all fit all and now this is going to be how our sketch sketches they need to line up let's go ahead and save this and now the fun part um, so let's select the base sketch we will be using the additive loft there's two types of lofts here um, subtractive loft and additive lofts uh, the red and blue one where it says remove it from the body that's a subtractive loft we'll use the yellow one which is the additive loft select um, click the loft button and in the loft parameters select add section select the mid section and then click add section again select the top section and look at that our our, um, our vase is almost ready let's go ahead and make it a closed loft now you have the other option is the ruled surface now what you'll notice is by default instead of straight lines it's connecting them using uh, calculated curves that go through those points um, instead if you wanted straight lines to connect them you could do this and that that would still you know that's still a valid it's still a valid sketch it still looks good uh, but for this one we will leave the ruled surface as unchecked let's go ahead and click OK and there you go it created a an object that goes through all three sketches and it, it molds itself to fit through those sketches now it's not much of a vase if it is a solid object but that part we will leave to the slicer to figure out we're still not complete there's still some of these hard edges let's go ahead and let's soften them let me save this let's go ahead and switch to the wireframe view from here this will make it easier for me to select these individual lines select them create chamfer and leave it at um, let's 
go ahead and switch to as is. Let's see, I think this looks okay. Let's go ahead and close that. Save this to save the progress. So now our vase is ready for 3D printing, almost. Let's go ahead and save this and export this as an STL file. So let me switch this to STL. Already had other vases. Then so let's do, let's override this file, replace it, yes. Save it. We'll now switch to our slicing software and continue the rest of the video there. And now to prepare the vase for 3D printing. I am using uh, Slicer Prusa Edition version 1.42. At the time of this video, a newer version is out, but I will we'll use this one as my printer is configured for this particular release. Let's go ahead and bring in our vase. And inspect it. For printing vases, slicers come with a special setting called vase mode. Um, in Slicer Prusa Edition, you can f get that under print settings. Under layer and uh, perimeters, there's a spiral vase. Go ahead and click that. And it will mention some of these uh, incompatible settings that it will reset, uh, accept it. And there you go. Let's go ahead and uh, leave the layer height to 0 0.3 and go back to the platter. Switch to the preview and there you go. This is how the vase will print. Let's scale it up to 200%. Go up and that should work just nicely. But uh, we can deploy to achieve that. We did not, we do not have a time of peeling off this it create um, a crack in the seam at the bottom but for the purposes of this video we should be okay um, and send this to a printer export as the card is selected g code save replace the old file and it will take about a little over an hour and 15 minutes to print which is not bad So that's one way you can create vases in FreeCAD. In future videos, I'll show you more ways to create vases for 3D printing. Until then, goodbye.